Hello, welcome to the last part of the script tool. So in this part, what we're going to do is we're going to test it out in Unreal. I already have Unreal open with, of course, Houdini Engine enabled and my tool imported. So the only thing we have to do is just drag and drop it and see how much it will work. So out of the box here, it doesn't do anything. And the simple reason for that is the tool is actually expecting an input. So we don't have any input right now. So we can also just like grab a sphere like we had before, just maybe it's a bit bigger. And this will then be my bush model. So in our tool now, what we can do is we can just click it and we're going to go all the way down to Houdini inputs. And then we can say, select something from the world. So in here, we're going to then say, start selecting, select the sphere and use as selection. Then a few seconds later, you will actually have your model. So at this stage, uh, my sphere is actually also overlapping with this. And what I can recommend you doing is actually here under rendering of the sphere, disable here, actor hidden in game. So we can actually see now uh, our result here. So it's actually working. And what I can see like the leaves are scattered nicely and the branches are there, but they are very thin. So I maybe want to have an option to boost that scaling value as well a bit more. Um, so I think I had it here already, like scale of the branches, so we can already boost it up here. But I can see it needs to be like a lot more, so we can even go like to five. So one of the main steps that I actually want to do here in this tutorial first is of course assigning the materials. If you have watched videos before, then you might know how to do this already. And I've already done the setup, so I have made a material folder. I have a basic material for the branches and I have a material for the leaves. And as I have mentioned in the tutorial before, we are using something from Megascan. So this is, for example, what I've been using. And I will automatically assign this material now. First step is to actually grab material and say right click and we want to get a reference. Then we want to go back into Houdini and in Houdini, we want to open up our tool again and all the way here at the bottom, we want to define a Unreal material. So here we can say, I want to have an Unreal material over here. And in this node, it will make a Unreal attribute, Unreal material attribute. And we want to overwrite the value where this is saying to copy the path of the shader. And this is basically what I just copied. So we'll actually just say, where is the shader located? So we have that now in place. So if I now select my tool, hit save and go back, we can click on our tool and hit rebuild. And now we have our leaves here. So you can see that we're now using those textures here. So that all works pretty well. We can also do the same then for the branch. So again, right click, copy reference. In Houdini, we can again use a Unreal Material node. So plug it in over here. We remove the path, copy our own path and save out the tool. Then in this here, we can just click rebuild. And we should be able to see that our branches are now having this brownish color. So that all works pretty well. Another thing we can do is play around with the vertex color. You might have noticed while I built this setup that I had actually this vertex color or this color or gradient going from like this dark value to the red value. And this can be used in a vertex uh, shader. So this vertex color will also be imported in Unreal. You can also make variations of this. If you have watched the IV tutorial, you will see that it will actually add variations on this as well, to actually to add more variation in the shader. So when I go, for example, here to my shader for my leaves, it's very basic. I can just call in the vertex color node and display this, for example, over here. So when I press save, we can now see that we have like this vertex color. So I can use this now to drive a simple wind effect, for example. So simple wind. And I can use my vertex color as my intensity. So I'm going to get back to the color and place this over here. So this result of the simple wind is actually part of the world position offset. And it, we still need to define here some of the other values. So let's fill in some basic values over here. And what I want to do here is for the weighting actually make sure it's not too intense so let's say 0.5 and as you can see now we have like this wind effect 
so we can make it a bit more subtle if you want to but it's actually now being controlled more with the vertex color so instead that the leaves move fully we only move like the top parts of the leaves so we have that now in place so there are a lot of interesting things you can do with vertex color like you can calculate interesting data in houdini bring that over with the vertex color and do something more special with the shaders so if you are someone with more knowledge about how shaders work you can definitely get way more out of this than doing than doing just like a simple wind effect another thing that i want to maybe add here in my tool is now when i load in my tool i had to actually select objects but maybe it's interesting to have some built-in objects so in houdini here i can go all the way at the top and what i can do is i can build a switch node for example here in the switch node uh, i can for example build in basic shapes so let's say you have a sphere this is then a sphere maybe i have a box and for example maybe a tube or something like that and plug in and make sure it's actually closed we can for example say that the default output of the tool will actually be using the sphere shape so as you can see the line goes like so do this is my default output for example so i'm going to go to my assets here add a new parameter and all the way at the top or at the settings menu i can just drag this over here and i can say a type of shape for example or shape type and we're also going to now switch this to a menu so we're going to create a menu we're going to say use a menu and we're going to define what the values are so when the value is zero we basically will fill in a custom shape so custom when value is one we will have that sphere when value is two we have a box and when the value is three we have a tube so you can see that you can start filling this with your own shapes and this is my and this might just be useful for someone who just quickly wants to create something uh, without having to go to the steps of selecting things and so on uh, you can also start to expose uh, parameters here as well like for example the scaling radius and so on like you can for example grab the overall scale with the box so we can play around with that as well so i'm gonna go and just press accept and go back to unreal so in unreal now i'm just gonna hit recook my tool and as you can see now it just outputs uh, this result here so it's just scattering around that sphere so we can go here to our uh, base settings and now we have that menu as well so i can just say i want to have a box or i want to have like the tube so we can play around with that as well so that might be easier uh, when i just uh, for example here if i grab a new version of the tool it will actually now output something by default so it will actually output this part as default and i can just go into the settings i can for example hey I can, for example, say, like, yeah, maybe we need to scale down uh, the leaves more, like so. And we can maybe say we want more of them. We can maybe we can say we want more of them. Then we have something like this. So right now, basically, our tool is done. And there are, of course, things you can fine-tune. If you don't like certain things, how they are, you can start fine-tuning values and so on. But this is how the tool would work here for this project. So I hope you enjoyed these videos, and thank you for watching.